if you haven't heard of Murder Drones, it's an online video series created by the same people that made Digital Circus, you know, the thing that just has 200 million views. Now, if you go and watch this series, you will be confused. Every person I showed it, they had no idea what was going on. You kind of gotta, like, rewatch it. But I love it. I love it so much. So much, in fact, that I'm making a 10-minute video on three seconds of the first episode. I'm surprised this scene didn't get more replays, so I'm going to look at this clip really closely and see if I can recreate the editing for this in Fallout 4. So there's this bloom effect right around the eyes, and then there's this little line that goes across the screen like this. What they did was they set a point right on the left side of the eye and then added a bloom and then maxed out the HV ratio. The back of the hairline is blurred, as well as the body in the background, so most likely they added a depth map and then had the back defocused. And I think on the same layer that they did that defocus, they it's actually two layers. You can see this distortion in the bottom jaw. It gives the illusion of it twitching. Right here is a good example. These four or five frames. The light that's irradiating, you can see it flickering. This frame here, when I, when I do this. I'm seeing little particles around and a smoke effect. So his breath is showing the particles in the air. He's using, they're using the smoke to show off the particles. Whoa, hold on. There's like a film grain. They're increasing the grain damage and the camera shake intensity. And it's so subtle too, and it's so nice. So here's my thinking. Okay, there are two, I'm, who uses smooth stroke? Okay, so we have two major layers. So the first layer has two glow effects over the eyes. The other one has a very horizontal heavy ratio. I'm noticing the grain effect doesn't affect the areas that are more heavy. So I'm going to assume that we'll just use like a bubble to ignore the eye area for the grain effects. Grain, ignore my awful handwriting. I made it worse. Now on the layer on top of that, they definitely have a depth map. And on that depth map, they darkened the screen, blurred it. There's no vignette. I don't think there's a vignette. It's too unsymmetrical for a vignette. Too asymmetrical. Unsymmetrical. Asymmetric. Asymmetric. Around the jaw, we saw there was a distortion or shaking. I'm gonna put shaking. Flickering. It was a flickering on the glowing parts. There is a flickering. So then there was a breath. So that's a third. That's actually a third layer. But, no it's not, let me look at the breathing. Not because I'm weird. I'm not weird. You're the weird one. You're the one watching this. There's also just smoke in the background too. And it looks like the smoke is blurred. So on this layer we can add a smoking effect. So breath. So all of these has a shaking overlay over here. The breath needs to be a bitmap for a texture or a grain. We, I know that I know the specific filter, but it's like it's like a movie grain. It's not exactly the same. This one's implying moisture. Ours is just gonna be silly, cool edit mode. There is a small cloud of smoke behind the character. So what we can do is rotoscope our character and then add the smoke cloud behind it for the dust. Roto dust. I'm calling it roto dust. And I think that's it. That should be everything. I had two mods in particular. America Rising 2, which added Enclave Attire. I used that for the glowing gas mask. And the what WA2000. I just think it looked nice. So I used the VAT system camera angle and then isolated it so that it looked like the camera was switching out from the scope to the character itself. I then duplicated this clip so that way we could get a normal view first and then the edited version. I'm thinking a Soft glow for the first one. Eclipse, so we know exactly where we're putting this. Right around the eye. We can reduce how hard the edges of the circle are so that the, the glow looks more natural. And already that looks really good. The same effect we did with the circle to limit where the effect applies, we're going to do the same with a very thin rectangle. This will make it so that the focal point of the eye is more pinpoint instead of it just being the whole thing. Intensify the glow. Actually, let's make this really short. Maybe, maybe not the gamma as much. We can keep that silverish look that the drone had by lowering the saturation. That way we can maintain the clean looking effect with the silver by removing any other color. And I kind of look, I thought this was the eye at first, that looked silly. There was a flicker effect. Addition. How's that look? Really gross. So we're gonna lower the range a lot. Max out the speed, increase the smoothness. I like that. One thing, the box that I'm using to add the glow is not moving with the camera, so we're going to fix that. Using two keyframes, I adjusted the position of the rectangle to follow the eye as it goes through the video. 
Now it's falling. That's good. That's good. So remember when I said I had two layers? I lied to you. We're actually going to do a different path in the same node tree. Because I don't know what broke, but something broke, so we're going to just put it in the same tree. So when I said I was doing layers, I meant something completely different. So what a depth map is, is a way of mapping a video's depth. Surprise. It pretty much just picks up the distance and separates it by black and white. This is handy because it lets you apply specific effects that gradually change with distance. This means you can artificially create a depth of field, so objects that are either too close or too far away get blurred out. This also needs to be connected to a bitmap to work. Instead of connecting the bitmap to the depth map, we're going to connect the depth map to the bitmap. Change this to limits. Add a defocus and attach the bitmap to the defocus. When connecting the bitmap to the blue arrow, it tells the filter where to apply its filter. And then we can add a color corrector, and then also add a blue tag from the square, and then set the lift down. To simulate the distortion effect that I saw, I tried attaching the bitmap to the camera shake. So we can add a camera shake, and then see if we can apply that with a bitmap. Yeah, that looks funky, that's cool. It did not look cool. Uh, another thing I want to add is a chromatic aberration. Let's go ahead and add that and see what happens. We're actually gonna add the camera shake after the chromatic aberration, but there's still something about it that doesn't feel right, so I think it's the color. One thing, the depth map took so much processing power, I had to export it first and then re-put it back in the video. This is the end result. So one issue with this is that there's a lot of distortion with a depth map. You can see that at the butt end of the gun, and for some reason the hands just look weird, so I, I fixed a few things. And by a few things I mean I adjusted the sliders until there were no gray artifacts around the head. So we're gonna put this magic mask here, and we're gonna rotoscope out our character. Oh, I should also mention everything we're gonna do with the rotoscope is gonna come after, or sorry, before, because it needs to be affected by the filter. So let's go ahead and rotoscope. Go bark character. This cutout doesn't have to look good, it just needs to have something for the dust to go under. Speaking of dust, I found this dust effect on Pixabay. By the guy, photos with Tim. I merged the video into the tree, and then I merged the cutout character in front of that one, so that the character would be on top of the smoke. Right? And what this does is, even though we're in slow motion, we'll have the smoke in the background to give the illusion that we're going faster. My next step was to figure out how to use the smoke as a bitmap to show a specific filter within the smoke. So I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try that real quick, hold on. Never done this before, this is totally new what I'm doing here. Never done this before in the history of my life. The lesson I learned from this right here is to always add a transform right after the video and then branch everything off the transform. Because otherwise you're gonna wonder why your filters aren't in sync for the next 40 minutes. Now we have earned our dust into a bitmap that can now register the, the phone grade. And for the final touches, I added a new adjustment clip over this one, and then added a small screen shake. I dropped the motion all the way down, pretty, not all the way down, but pretty low, and ramped up the speed so it had a very, very tense feeling to it, and then played with the highlights and shadows again. With that, we have the final results. I tested this out on a few other shots by just copying over the entire adjustment clip and then I went into the fusion and then modified it so that it would look more tailored to the specific clip. And it turned out like this.